We shot a car scene a while back for our short film Vengeance, and this was entirely done in studio by using projection. And I believe this is much easier than working with a green screen, as we need to work with moving lights, and we'll get into that soon. The video clips that are being projected are real driving shots, and it looks great and very realistic, but it has two major problems. First of all, you're bound to the locations where you can shoot these clips, so that means no sci-fi stuff. And second, the talent cannot interact with the background. And by that I mean accelerate and stop the car. And to solve those issues, we're going to do some virtual production today using Unreal Engine and the awesome LG Cinebeam who are sponsoring this video to project the backgrounds. I really have to go to the car wash. Like really. Virtual production is where everything happens real time. The director and crew can view their monitor as if their digital assets are part of reality. And by using an LED wall, a big TV or projection, your talent can also interact in real time with the digital world. So it has lots of benefits. Now last time we used Unreal Engine to display a background that interacted with the camera, but we used a green screen. Today we're going to work with the LG Cinebeam to display the background in real time, eliminating the need for any post-production. Now I do have to mention that an LED wall is always going to be better because it emits light instead of giving a reflection. However, you're going to have to sell a couple of kidneys for that. It is extremely expensive, so a projector is going to be the best choice for most of us. And LG's new Cinebeam HU810PW gives you 2700 lumen output, which is very bright and with its 2 million to 1 contrast ratio, it is pretty good for virtual production. Now we are using a simple white cloth, which is not ideal. If your budget allows I do suggest to get a dedicated projection background. There are even backgrounds that can gain the brightness, but all in all, we're getting a pretty good result with a cheap white cloth. Now, the Cine Beam has 4K resolution and is able to project up to 300 inch if you'd like to retain that crisp 4K quality. However, for virtual production, when you're using the Beamer as an alternative for a green screen, chances are that the background is going to be out of focus. So you don't really need that 4K resolution. And in that case, the size of your projection is endless. And that's exactly what we're gonna try out today. Here it is guys, the LG Cine Beam, and like the name says, it's a cinema beamer, which is great for your home cinema, but also for virtual production. We're going to mount the Cine Beam to the ceiling right here, so we can project over the car so that it won't make any shadows. Now luckily, this beamer has a lens control here on the side, and with this knob, we can shift the lens uh, horizontally, but also vertically to really aim the picture right. Now this beamer here is designed for both dark rooms and bright rooms, and it actually has an iris control control on site to do that. Now we get superb 4K crisp quality. It supports up to 97% of the DCI P3 color profile, which is pretty huge for a beamer, guys. And filmmaker mode is going to turn off any motion smoothing or other video processing settings so that it can accurately deliver the creator's intent. Now just like smart TVs, this right here is a smart beamer. That means that you can hook it up to your Wi-Fi or you can also just insert an ethernet cable right in here. It also has an ARC HDMI port, which means that you can hook up your audio system to it and uh, yeah that's pretty much it oh yeah and I forgot and I think this is pretty obvious but we also have a zoom control and a focus control for the lens which works really well all right now let's put the LG Cine Beam to the ceiling guys and I don't have a bracket for it so I'm going to have to DIY build something Now using Unreal Engine, Jenik was working on a sci-fi city. But to spare time, we bought some assets from the Unreal library, so it was just a matter of placing the buildings and neon signs wherever we want. The biggest challenge was the driving car. I want to give the option to the driver to use actual pedals to control the background. Now that's actually quite easy. If you have one of these steering wheels and pedals to play racing games, you just enable the Windows RAW input plugin from within Unreal Engine. It's super easy to set up, just follow their help guide. Of course, you can also just use a normal keyboard. If you map the throttle to the space bar, you can use that as the gas pedal. The biggest struggle was probably to get natural acceleration and braking, so we need to have some sort of car physics in Unreal. And I found a tutorial from Pink Pocket TV who explains it very well, and just gonna leave a link to his video in the description down below. It takes some time to set up, or you can also just buy his project, which I did to save time, and at the same time we're also supporting a fellow creator. Anyways, I just then had to jump into his car blueprint, head over to the viewport, and with the mesh layer selected, 
it in a details panel I unchecked visible. And this way we could hide the car because we don't need it, we just need its physics. The virtual camera I then rotated 90 degrees so that it would point out the side window. And that's it. From the project settings we can easily map the key bindings to the throttle and brake pedals. And now we just have to combine this project with the one that Janik made his sci-fi city in and that gave us a realistic car movement. It works! It's like a car simulator. I know, this is an electric car. What a weirdo! The first test went great. We can control the background with the pedals. We have a throttle and a brake control. So that's already working, but it isn't looking realistic just yet. And that's because we need lighting as well. But not just lighting, we need movable lights. So that's why we got Janik there in the background. He's actually going to create the reflections of the background. We have some blue and red neon signs in Unreal Engine. And he's just going to cast that onto the car. But he's going to move his arms and that way it seems like it's passing by. Now since we can interact with the background, Lorenzo is going to mimic a stoplight. So it's going to fade in as a red color, then I'm just going to press the brake on the pedals, and then it's going to turn green. And at this point, Lorenzo is just going to turn that light around as I throttle again, give gas, and, and continue to drive on. Always think about movement, guys. If you drive, your lights have to turn around. Create movement as well. And finally, we got Janik again. I think we're gonna need your help, Timo. Anyways, uh, he is controlling the street light, so he's just going to wave around, making it seem like it's a street light that is passing by every time. It, it's super simple. And last but not least, make sure that you don't cast light onto the projection screen. That's it. We can now uh, drive the car. are here guys i was speeding i guess anyways here on my left side you can find a video where we hooked up a camera to unreal engine and kind of have some motion control going on in there so definitely check that out thank you so much for watching thank you lg for the support and as always stay creative i don't have insurance damn it i'm just gonna drive off guys <laughs> this is such a slow car <laughs>